Welcome back. Earlier we were discussing with the Minister the public sector wage bill, concerns around that. Uh, public sector officials themselves have been wanting initially a 10% increase and there have been protracted negotiations. Today the Minister was uh, meant to announce that this was a done and dusted deal, uh, but some of the unions are holding out, specifically the Public Servants Association uh, says it needs more time to consult. Uh, it's not sure if it's happy with what's been settled on which is 7%. However, reportedly the Kasatu affiliated public sector unions have agreed. Joining us now uh, from Nahawu, one of those unions and representing all the Kasatu affiliated unions is Mike Shingange. Thank you for being with us, uh, Mr. Shingange. Are you happy with the deal? No, no, we're not happy. Um, uh, are, you, are you willing, were you willing to sign the deal today? No, no, not today. Look, what we can uh, indicate is that the uh, the employer last week has presented what he, it's called it in a final offer mm -hmm. after the 7 percent and the package because it's not all just the 7 percent uh, a number of unions uh, given that the, the road has been traveled for the past almost 10 months mm -hmm. uh, uh, indicated their willingness to, to to sell the offer to their members or at least to explain to their members the content of the offer and come back to the employer and indicate However, the employer, for some reasons today, came to the meeting ready to sign, ready to have a press conference, only to find that the, the majority of the union were not ready to, 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 to sign, even those that will have indicated their willingness to accept the, the offer as it was. But that could not have been done without um, engaging their members and getting feedback to the members. So you're still consulting with your membership? Yes. You remember that in terms of the constitution of the PSBC, once the employer have indicated that they've reached the finality in terms of their negotiations, in other words, once they put a signature on top of it in offer, mm -hmm. what it means is that they have done negotiating. But it gives unions a period of 21 days for them to engage with their members and also make up their mind in terms of whether they want to append their signature or not. So it is, it is a fact that uh, a, a, a unions, a number of unions in Cosato and also in other uh, uh, federations will have indicated their willingness to, to consider the offer. But that did not mean that the people were ready with their pens mm -hmm. to sign. Uh, are you not backtracking at all? There were reports that all Kasatu unions were willing to sign. Fedusa was even accusing you of not consulting your members, of not wanting to debate, just, just wanting to sign. Uh, I think even suggesting you had friends in government. Yeah, well, well it's, it's a funny part. This morning we had a, a meeting with uh, what we call joint principals meeting with the affiliates of Fedusa, which we call the Interpreted Labour Caucus. There were, such accusations were never made to themselves. They indicated two weeks ago, in fact, their readiness to, to sign. It had to be Cosato unions which pleaded with the Independent Labour Caucus not to do so, but at the same time, uh, they had their pressure from the in, in, inside there. So it can't be correct that the Cosato unions have long signed the, the, the agreement. They didn't, they didn't do so. And uh, they, we do think that uh, it's uh, just a political gimmick that has been played by Fetu. So they know very well that uh, if Kosad would have wanted to sign the agreement long time ago, they would have signed with or without mm -hmm. them. But we have always maintained a unit of, of public sector workers. We have worked well with affiliates of Fetu, which we call them independent labor unions. We have maintained a united front as labor. That is why we are, even today, when we met with them, it was clear that we also giving them enough time to make sure that they finalize their, their, their consultation. They must also give us enough time to finalize our consultations. And, and what about government? Why would the minister have gone to a press conference, to a signing, if there was no indication from unions that they wanted to sign? Well, I, I don't know. Perhaps we'll pardon the minister. She, she arrived in this is department. Is she confused? No, no, no. She, I don't think she is. But uh, we, we, we think it goes with an experience. It has never happened that even when things are moving smoothly, you agree, indicate at the, at the beginning that we are going to sign. It has never happened that on the day when an employer must make its signature, uh, don't, you don't comply with the constitution of the PCBC. You think that you can have a press conference. Look, these negotiations have never been one of those easy negotiations. Very tough, very mm -hmm. difficult. Uh, tensions were high. It can't be that uh, we have a signing ceremony that looks like that uh, everything is on good day. Like I said, even those unions that will have indicated to accept the offer, uh, but still consulting their members, none of them uh, was uh, doing so out of excitement or out of the fact that they are happy with the offer. Mm -hmm. It is an offer that uh, we, we could have, uh, uh, in our view, it should be improved or should have been improved. So even if it was to be signed, it shouldn't be signed in, the, in front of the cameras as if it is the best deal we have ever clinched at all. It is not. So we don't know why the minister will have wanted to come today and, uh, and have a press conference or that because 
like I'm saying, it should give unions a period of 21 days. If it's less, it's bonus. But constitutionally, it must have 21 days. And I understand what you're saying. This isn't best for, for you, but this is big for the country. Reserve Bank after Reserve Bank governor has been saying that the, the wage bill is huge. Uh, maybe that's not because of earning. Maybe it's because of the number of public servants we have. But it, it's an inflationary risk. Uh, some of the, uh, if, if, if the increases are too high, 7%, are you personally happy with that? Is, is Nahawi's leadership, are the other union leaders happy with 7%? I want to repeat, there's no union that is happy with the 7%. Uh, there's no union that do, you, is do you find it acceptable, I guess, in light of the, of the strain on the fiscal? <laughs> Look, that uh, particular issue was not to talk to about now. That will come from the members. Like, um, that's, why, that's the point, reason why the unions are consulting their members. But just to, to, to deal with the issue of uh, a, a wage bill and a, a public servants being main, we don't know whether we, what is it that we're talking about because uh, as we speak today, about five years ago, the public servants in this country were 1.3 million. Today, they're 1.1, 1, 1 million, 147,000. Mm. Meaning that over 200,000 workers have, are no longer in the public service. In the growing population, that is about 56 million now. So you tell me if indeed it's a fact that the public servants are too bloated now. When you have this so much to be done, you go to home affairs and you tell me whether there's enough uh, public servants there. You go to hospitals and you tell me if there's enough public servants there. You go to schools and ask schools how many teachers were there three years ago and how many teachers are there today and you come here and say that uh, we are too many, we, 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 the, the, huge, the increase, it, it, it can be. The, the state must invest in the public service. It doesn't matter how many billions they invest as long as it's in the battalion that is giving service delivery. For the state to be judged whether it's delivering on its mandate, it, it relies on the service delivery machinery, machinery which is the public service. And, and can the state <laughs> demand service delivery from those public servants and, and link their uh, salaries to performance? It has no. It has got the performance management system in in place. But what we're saying is that one of the things that is not happening is that to date, a worker is working for more than four people in a section that workers were supposed to be seven. Today there are only two or there are only three. That on its own is an indication of a public servant who has already gone an extra mile in trying to deliver service to our people under strenuous conditions, including the lack of resources that we need to say to deliver service to our people. So the, the, the state every time when there's poor performance, they have they use performance management system to make sure that they reward good performance or they actually discipline those who are not performing. But when it comes to, to salaries, these public servants in this country are the lowest paid public servants, including the level of inequality. One of the reasons why we're demanding the abolishment of lower salary levels like level one, two, three, four, is because that perpetuates an apartheid wage gap that has been we have inherited as this country that is too much inequality. We are the number one in country uh, in, in the world as a country of inequality because you have got a public servant who's earning five thousand and you have got a public servant who's earning fifty thousand. We are saying that gap must be closed because it doesn't make sense that we're working for the same state but you earn so much difference into that's that's the reason why we are, we have unhappy and unmotivated, unincentivized civil servants in this country. All right. Thank you for your time. Uh, so we'll follow that. The deal was not signed. That was Mike Shingange from uh, Kasatu Affiliated Unions.